September 3rd, 1939, a brilliant Sunday morning. It was a wonderful autumn when the world I knew and loved was finished forever. Last window breaks, it gets everyone's attention, it shatters any sense of normalcy. Kristallnacht was the shattering of the idea that this was going to go away. You can't put back together a glass window. When we see films and all kinds of plays, we don't hear ourselves talk. Who speaks for us? The most important people in the drama are the prisoners. They're the only ones who can pry open the inside. You hear me speak, but do you hear me feel? That question of what do we allow ourselves to feel? Maybe we can't do it every day, but I think the willingness to say, I'm going to feel not the six million, I can't do that, but I am going to listen to this one person's story, and I am going to feel your story. The more I can engage with one particular story, the more I'm willing to hear, to see the pain, to not look away, the more I can understand the unfathomable that lies beyond it. By early May, we were in the cattle cars to Auschwitz. Auschwitz. Here, four million people were murdered. As many men, women, and children as you could pack into a great city. I said to myself, if there is hell on earth, this is it. And do you know, I was right. My mother grabbed my twin sister and me by the hand, and she thought we were her youngest children that as long as she could hold on to us, that somehow she could protect us. She came, pulled my mother to the right, we were pulled to the left, we were crying, she was crying, and all I really remember is seeing her arms stretched out toward us as she was pulled away. I did not realize that that would be the last time we would see her. That little strip of land, my whole family was ripped apart. This is where they took away all the joy of my life. We were undressed naked. They checked us, all the cavities of the body, to make sure that we are not hiding diamonds or money or whatever. There were women returning from work because our camp was a woman's camp and they saw children and the woman jumped out of the line, started to run toward us, yelling at us, children, where do you come from? Of course, she hoped that she would find some information about her child. Two dogs at the master's orders tore her to pieces right in front of us. At that point, I even wasn't together with my mother. I didn't even know where she was. In the morning, when I lined up, a woman said to me, you're by yourself, little girl. I said, well, my mother came with me. I don't know what happened to her. She said, you see the smoke? Maybe they put her in the chimney. I realized if I cried, I could not concentrate on survival. The two do not coexist. The need to survive takes over. And that is the most powerful need in human existence, to live one more day. They were killing us and we were singing. Isn't this a scream? Yes, I saw on a close by hill a strange looking car and its hood nuts a despised swastika. 
but the white star of the American army. Brighter than every star I had ever seen in the universe. I'd like to give you a picture. I weighed 68 pounds. My hair was gray. I was going to be 21 the following day. I was in rags. I hadn't had a bath in three years. And here was this very handsome young American. He simply held the door open for me and let me precede him. And in that incredible gesture, he restored me to humanity again. What I discovered for myself was life changing. I discovered I had one power, the power to forgive. I even had the power to forgive the angel of death in Auschwitz. I went home, picked up a dictionary, wrote down a list of about 20 nasty words. Then I proceeded in reading those words clear and loud to that make-believe mangler in the room. In spite of all that, I forgive you. I felt immediately that all the pain I carried around for 50 years was lifted from my shoulder, that I was no longer a victim of Auschwitz, nor was I a prisoner of my tragic past. Look at the world around you. Don't see a race, don't see a religion. See a human being that the Lord in heaven, but whatever name we call him, created.